Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about human population growth. What's interesting about human population growth is I'm coming at it from a perspective of an ecological perspective, but you could certainly study human population growth in the field of sociology. Now, sociology incorporates all kinds of dimensions, like for example, religious perspectives and different cultures that influence whether or not uh, populations are growing. It, it ties in education and economics as being factors that influence whether or not women are having a certain number of children. And so these are really important considerations. It's not just the biological component, which are things like um, age structure and generation time, these sorts of things. And likewise, environmental science also touches on human populations because there's a, a very huge correlation between the rise of the human population and the detriment of the environment. As population increases in humanity, it's using up a lot of the resources, which is we're sharing these resources on this planet with all of the species that are, that, that are living here. And so that's certainly like, for example, when you talk about pollution and uh, species becoming extinct and habitat destruction, introduced species, um, these are all because of human population growth. And so I'm coming at it from an ecological perspective. And so let's begin that pers let's pr begin that conversation if we can. So what I'll say is that the human population since the beginning of humanity has been growing exponentially now, but it's not going to be able to do that indefinitely. We know that populations, no matter what you're talking about, grow exponentially, but eventually they run out of resources, begin to slow and then reach that caring capacity. But human population has been growing rather slowly for a long period of time. And so let's take a look at that. Like, do you see on this graph, this the J-shaped curve right here, do you see where it's lagging? It's been lagging for thousands and thousands of years. It's, take th it's taken thousands of years in order to reach this first billion mark. This first billion mark was 1804. And then when did we reach 2 billion? Ah, 1930, basically. Wow, so that's a real short difference. So in 100 years, basically, we went from 1 billion to 2 billion. So how do you like this? We went from 2 billion to 3 billion in 1960, and then 1975, and then look at this, 6 billion in the year 2000. And now we're currently somewhere between 7 billion and 8 billion people on the earth. Now we're in a really, really rapid growth over here. And so why is that? Well, it's a couple of things. The number one reason is that the number of individuals is very high. And when you remember the equation, and if you don't recall it, I shall write it out. The equation is the birth rate times the number of organisms. So since there's so many humans, so, so many people now, 7 billion plus, that number times the growth rate is really rapid. You know, there's a lot more babies because there's a lot more women having those babies. It's not that the women are having a lot of babies that reproduction's gone crazy, but rather there's many more women having the babies, okay? But the truth is the birth the growth rate is actually higher too. Now, growth rate is not just birth, it's death as well. And so we've lowered the death rate by our advancements in technology and medicine. We've also lowered the uh, infant mortality. So that R is looking pretty strong times a high number, and this is the recipe for rapid growth, and that's what we're seeing. And so you, you might think of it, I don't want to be negative about it, you might take a perspective as look how prosperous the human population is, look at how it's thriving. But the, the thing is, it's not going to thrive indefinitely. It's, event, it's eventually going to run out of resources. And so this is, this is a challenge because not only are we going to be, slow down because of competition, but we're using a lot of the resources, as I alluded to before, of other organisms on the earth. And that's not so good because the truth is we need those other organisms. We're all in this together. And so the one uniqueness about there might be more than one, but I think the one of the unique qualities about human population is that we can decide whether or not zero population growth will be obtained. 
what do you mean we could decide? Well, we have conscious control. <laughs> I like to think we do, but we have conscious control over our reproduction. Now, we're not going to decide to um, not keep people elderly alive, and we're not going to influence uh, infant mortality, but we can decide how many children we're going to have. It is our conscious choice. We could, if we don't want to have children, we could have um, contraception to prevent that, and we could decide. So what I'm getting at is if the number of births equal the number of deaths, you're going to have zero population growth. So just keeping it simple, if a couple, that's two, decide to have two children, that's zero population growth because that's R is zero. So that means that the number of, of births and deaths are the same. So that's zero, zero times, I don't care how many billion, it's going to be zero growth. So it's going to flatline. And you're like, wow, how about this? If couples, that's two, have only one child, that means that the R value is going to be negative, and so the population will decline. And so we have control of that. And you're like, well, the factors that influence that control are many. Like governments uh, exhibit control over these decisions. Uh, religion influences this. Uh, your, the culture that you grew up in influences this. Your, your economic ability to have more children influences this. So there's many factors here. And you don't want to be too judgmental because each person has a little different story. Like it might be different if you were someone in Africa and you, and you needed a lot of children in order to you know, get the work done for the family. And it's a whole nother story. But in a different country, you might want to have a few less because it's expensive. And so there, there, this is why human population conversations are somewhat sociological. And I welcome you to take a sociology class because that's where you're going to really get the answers that you need. But I'll, but I'll go as far as to say this graph is certainly an indicative of exponential growth and the world population is really rising and it's of concern. I'll say that. And so, you know, you can reach this zero population growth uh, two ways, basically. It's called a demographic transition. You could have, for example, a lot of births and a lot of deaths. And now you don't want that because no one wants a lot of deaths and a high birth rate is troublesome as well. But these two things cancel each other out so you get zero growth. What we're all trying to transition toward is each country wants to have a lower birth rate this is an ideal, lower birth rate and a lower death rate. See, now this is great. Now, not a, a, every country has achieved this. And so I don't want to play favorites, but here's a picture of Sweden. And it's taken a couple, like almost 150 years, it looks like, for them to achieve this uh, demographic transition. Now, other countries are working toward that. You know, their birth rate is still a little too high. Death rate is still a little too high. So, um there's a lot of factors, again, that, that will influence this. Now, one of the important uh, and interesting qualities of human population is something called age structure. Now, let me slow this down a little bit and take a look at the United States. Now, when I say age structure, what I'm talking about is, look here on the uh, x-axis. This is the number of individuals. And you're like, well, why is it going up here and going over here? Well, it's separated right in the middle these, the, the men are over here in yellow and the women are in green. And so basically they're about 50-50, the same amount of men and women. Sometimes there's some differences. So do you see here, we're looking at like children under five. These are boys under five, around nine million. These are girls under five, around nine million. So about 18 million people in the United States are below the age of five, according to the census in 2000 might be different now. These these are the numbers that you're dealing with. And you're like, well, wh what do I care that there's this ma many individuals that are over 80? Like, what's this to me? Well, it's, it's rather critical because I'll say this. One of the interesting um, demogra demographics with humanity is that puberty, in other words, the year at first reproduction is happening right around here. So this is the age at first reproduction, and now we're talking females here particularly, although males need to reach puberty as well. And then menopause, this is the day at which menstruation stops. And so here's the window that females have in order to have offspring. So 
you could look at this and say, well, this is where birthing is taking place. And this is where death is taking place. Do you remember uh, humans have type one survivorship? And so if there's fewer individuals up here, that means the death rate is going to be lower. And if there's a bunch of kids down here, the birth rate is going to be high. Now, it looks fairly consistent for the United States, but look over here in Kenya. Now, Kenya has like this huge number of children in the country. I'm not sure if you knew that. And they have very few, it's kind of unusual, very few elderly. Now, this means that this country, if I were to ask you which country, the United States or Kenya, is going to be growing more rapidly, and you're like, I know, I know, it's going to be Kenya because there's a lot more youth. And when that youth gets into the puberty window or the reproductive area, they're, they're going to have a lot more births. So it's birth minus death, low death, high number of births, okay? But there's more to it because, again, let me remind you that it's R times N. And we've been talking about R a lot. And we're like, well, look, high birth, low death, okay? That, that means that it's going to be a big R. But N is the real decider. Now, look down here. Do you notice how there's much fewer individuals living in Kenya than the United States has a much larger population? So the truth is, yeah. The Kenya is growing, but yeah, it's okay. If you have a population that's very large and has a high growth rate, India, for example, then there's trouble, <laughs> big trouble. And so there's some countries that are like that. And so just want to point that out. If you look at Kenya, you're like, okay, it's rapid growth, again, because of the R value. The United States is like slow growth. And then over here, Italy, it looks like um, when you all things considered, it might not even be growing at all. Birth rate and death rate might be the same. And so, you know, how, how far can we go with this exponential growth? When will the human population reach the carrying capacity? This is a question. Like, what what is the carrying capacity for the human race? Some professors in, in uh, Ecological population studies will suggest that we've already exceeded it. And you're like, no, yeah, we didn't exceed it. We're still going up in the J-shaped curve. We haven't asked out yet. And that's because we keep raising the bar by using a lot of the habitat on the earth and consuming the resources. We keep raising the resources. And so we keep growing exponentially. Well, eventually the earth will become overpopulated and, and you know, when will that time be? And so, you know, some governments have taken action and they've mandated one child policies for their country. Now, you might think that that is a violation of a human right to decide for the female to decide how many children she would like to have. It's a government's going to tell her how many children to have. But the truth is that maybe that kind of a policy is quite humane and just. And it allows everyone an opportunity to survive, not just the rich. Something of consideration. Currently, when you look at the, the, the human population rate, it's 1.5% per year, which means that the human population is on a trajectory to double in the next 50 years. That's a lot of people. And then when you consider, uh, it's not just, you know, where are the big populations? But here's something of consideration. The United States has a big population, but it's when we're talking about consumption of resources, this is what this graph is getting at, like energy consumption. It's like some countries are consuming the majority of the energy, consuming a lot of the resources. That doesn't seem quite fair. And so there's a lot of issues that biology can't really address. And so this is a really an interdisciplinary conversation. I hope I've emphasize that enough. It, it, again, theology plays a role, economics plays a role, and you know, sociology in general plays a role. It's really important. And so, you know, will we ever know what the carrying capacity is for the earth? It, it, there's got to be one. It's a finite planet. The thing is, we need to be responsible. We need to act within our mean. We need to, to not abuse the resources. We need to live modestly. We need to have less stuff. How about this? Less stuff, more happy. <laughs> so, you know, 
there's been a lot of growth in the last 50 years. And, um, you know, where, where we're going with this is, is no one really knows. But I will say this. Um, if you take a look here, like check this out, and I'll conclude with this. Um, take a look at this website. Now, this is current. This is the United States population here, 316, 316 million individuals in the United States. Now, th this may not be exact, although it's as the best we could do. The world population is 7 billion, almost 7.1 billion individuals. So in other words, 7 billion, 100 million. That's a lot. So what are the most popular countries? China with 1.3 billion. India, 1.2 billion. The United States, look at the drop off, only 316 million. So Indonesia, Brazil, Pakistan, if you, so if we were to summarize this, like we're looking at, Japan has a high population for being, having such a small area, that's of concern. But what we're talking about is China and India. And so there's two different stories going on. In China, they're reducing their birth rate. But in India, that isn't really working out as well. And so India is in, is in jeopardy. <laughs> and so I hope that, I don't mean to like pick on certain countries, but I hope what we're getting at when, when, when we talk about this is that what happens in one country influences the rest of the world. I know we have these these uh, national maps where we have the, the world is broken up like the one I was just showing you, broken up into countries. Countries, we're talking about humans are one species and we're all sharing the same planet and the same resources. So we have to live cooperatively and within our means. And that, sorry to sound like I'm preaching, but that's ultimately it. What we need is education, especially for these developing countries. And we need education for the young women in particular, because women who are educated aren't taken advantage of. Women who are educated aren't going to have that many more children. Women who are educated are spending more time in school, are, are having a better profession, and are the leaders of the family, which will influence the next generation. The key is education of young women. So I hope you enjoyed this conversation that we're having on human population. Thanks for watching.